Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 195. This episode is a rare two-for-one special. I got to hang out with Ryan M. James and Catherine Farron. And spoiler alert, they're both awesome. In this episode, we talk about how they first met, Catherine's band, how Ryan learned to edit videos, the different plays and musicals Catherine has written, Ryan's Machinima series, A Clone Apart, and their new movie, All of It, which they've been working on for 15 years years. It started out as short films, is turning into a feature, and they are currently crowdfunding it. You could be a part of this, people! There's a link in the description of this podcast, so be sure to check it out and contribute to something really cool. It's at allofitmovie.com for more info. Ryan and Catherine are good peeps, and I'm so excited for what they're doing. You are in for a treat, my friends, so let's get right into this. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 195, with Ryan M. James and Catherine Farron. Theme song time. both in LA yeah yeah okay are you are you from LA because most people I talk to in LA are transplants or come from somewhere else yeah both of you born born and raised born and raised which really? kind of makes sense we've known each other for so long that it, it would make sense that we were because we met in school so okay. it would probably high matter. school I got it clear. okay okay so you had you a had very, some time before a very a very long time <laughs> <laughs> How did, how did you guys meet? What happened? Was it a class? Who who fell into what wall and the other side uh, was there? How did that work? <laughs> well, Ryan, Ryan is a little older, just a bit, just a tiny bit. Just a smidge. Um, so in, in just distinguishedly older. Distinguishedly yes, older. Just enough to um, have class. It, mm. um, yes, very <laughs> much. Of course. Um, but actually we met because uh his brother, his younger brother, was my first boyfriend. Nice. So yeah. So I would go over to their house and hang out. And I was like, oh, yeah, his, his, my boyfriend has a brother who's, I guess, kind of cool. Whatever. Um, yeah, so whatever. I don't know. And from Maybe. that, a beautiful friendship was born. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> Ryan's like, Ryan's like nodding, going. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. I, I'm no, I'm just searching the, the backup hard drives to see if there's more color or warp stuff to throw in <laughs> but because i'm that distinguished bit older it's a little slow yeah oh, yeah, yeah. I see. it takes mm. time we have to give him time it's the mm -hmm. it's the, the the delay of age which you know it happens to the best of us ryan i get it i was i was just old enough that we never got to do any because we were both big theater kids at our high school uh, and so i never got to do any performative stuff with her until after when we were both in college and beyond mm -hmm. she she cast me in a couple things there you go. I did. Well, then you cast me in something. True, true. Mm -hmm. I don't know which order, which happened first. I think you were in the my the play I produced first, and then you the cast me. You the musical. The musical. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We sang a duet on stage. That's right. That what? was fun. Uh-huh. Oh, and that was and, it. You can't turn back and, from that. Uh, I know. And then he was doing a movie and, and cast me in a, a little part where I got to play a cool vampire. So what am I going to say no to that? Dude, this she sounds like the really... greatest friendship ever. <laughs> she had these really bitchin' teeth, did the dental molds and everything. They were so cool. What? Dental oh, yeah. molds? That, oh yeah. Well, break this down for me. How does that work? I I'm I this was early two thousands. And okay. so I went on the internets and like a guy made, you know, things and he's like, Do you want the true blood teeth? Do you want the interview with the vampire teeth? Do you want yeah. the standard Dracula ones? And it's like, go to your dentist pay some money and get molds of your teeth sent and then I will make you custom ones that fit yeah. on your individual teeth that fit over your teeth. What? And so for her, yeah, so for her and a few of our other vampires, they all uh, got a set of teeth. Yeah. That is the, crazy awesome. The yeah. actual dentist was involved? Do you, oh, yeah. Do, I had to go to a dentist. What level you're operating at? <laughs> you understand? Most people's like, let's cut out something and glue it in there and hope to God it comes off when we're done. 
Yeah, so legit <laughs> out the gate. Yeah. No, we were yeah. shooting for like nine weeks. We needed these things to yeah. like to last <laughs> and and look okay. So unfortunately, yeah, that that shoot. movie is like it just it didn't end up being good enough. I I think we I reused the character in a, a set of novels that mm-hmm. I co-wrote with my mom, who's a screenwriter, uh-huh. and uh, and also we used that camera. And our skeleton crew, who are just our friends, uh, when we then did our next project together. Ooh, nice segue into Look the that. oh, that's true. Into that's true. the main that's true. event there. Look I saw that. that. Look at I that. saw that. Don't think we're gonna gloss over your mom's a screenwriter. What? Don't. She's and also a novelist. Books? Yeah, I, you wrote two books together. Yeah. Yes, I grew up in a house of my mom writing screenplays all the time and so was always talking to me about stories. So I knew that Robert McKee shit uh-huh. since I was sh- this tall. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we and I would be giving her story notes and structure conversations, Amazing. all that stuff. And so eventually um, after that movie was made and just went nowhere, like I was in the middle of working, finishing uh, one of the games that I work on. And she called me and I stepped out onto the like balcony where everyone took their phone calls. And she's like, yeah. hey, I have this idea. I have this idea for a story and I want to use this uh, this uh, female character I've been working on. And then I want to borrow the male character that you played in your movie for it. And I was like, well, not unless I'm helping you write this. So, Good man, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you so learned. we adapted. Yes. So we adapted <laughs> what we'd done there. There were no more vampires, but like we we figured out a, a way to get this like super powered person into her high school story, and we set it at the high school that Catherine and I both went to. Boom! Look at this. Life imitates art. Art imitates life. Whatever it is. First one is called Forbidden. Yeah. Uh, it's like these two teenagers who have angelic powers and then uh, uh, the girl's a half angel, I suppose. And the guy is full. And then the uh, the sequel that we wrote a few years later is called Emboldened. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I may be aware of it. <laughs> Pretty cool. The second one's fun. The, um, the, the characters really step up and actually get to have some fight scenes. There you go. You have to. You got to raise the mm-hmm. bar on the sequels. Mm-hmm. So okay, so I'm fo- I'm following this along. You got theater kids growing up. I see. I know Catherine. You've got you've got some uh, some Broadway ness in your family. I do. So was was acting something that was already there, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this, or did you just come out onto stage and your parents were like, yeah, that checks out. Wait, I actually don't know what he's talking about. I don't think I I don't know you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, my grandfather was a, a producer of many things, including shows in New York and on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my great uncle was Jerry Bach, who wrote, you know, some pretty awesome things like Feather on the Roof. And oh, yeah. oh, that old, you know, just, just that, that old thing. You know, so I may have grown up knowing a lot about musicals and shows and things like that. My mom mm-hmm. also was an actor um, earlier in her day and then kind of got out of that. But I definitely feel like I was thrust into it at an early age. And actually, the the real way that I was sort of put into this whole world was that I actually auditioned for and got into uh, Kindergarten Cop when I was four years old. Dude. Um, yeah. And uh, and I, I actually got a pretty good size role and I ended up going to Oregon to shoot and then I got sick and I oh. was I just didn't have the patience for a sick four-year-old and if you can believe it they fired me what and uh yeah they so just that made was an a enemy. little sad I know I mean, for life. to think to this day you'd be living off those sweet sweet residuals I actually still do you do oh what? yes, do. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah they still High they five. still had that was they still had to pay me so that was good but anyway but um once I once that happened, I just sort of never left the world of acting. I just I loved it and I just always wanted to be a part of it. So basically since four, that was it. I only had eyes for acting. Um yeah. and then of course years later I realized, oh I, I like writing too. Writing's pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, when did you start playing music? Uh 
I, I mean, I took singing lessons my whole life and I was doing musicals since I was little. And then when I was in college, I met this uh, guy who is also named Ryan. And this is the weird no, thing. No relation. No relation. No, no. But he also has a brother with your same brother's name. And he has your same what? middle name. And their birthdays are one day apart. So it's very weird. I swear. It's very Ryan, strange. you have to kill him. Those are the rules. <laughs> no, no, no. He's useful. He's like recording all the music. Oh, okay. That we do. Yeah, we ha- we, we need now. him. Yeah. yeah. We One misstep, he's, though. He's, yeah, he's on thin fucking ice. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let me tell you right so now, this... I hate him. <laughs> Ryan, I, I, I put up with him. Love you. I put up with him. Yeah, he's uh, but... other Ryan. Other Ryan. He can also he can grow a full beard, which I can uh, never do. Okay. He's I like, rocking a big beard right now. I like oh, him yeah. a little better now. I'll be honest. Yeah, That's great. Yeah. yeah. See, but wow. uh, he had this really really awesome band called Relax to Paris, and I went to go see a show of theirs, and I was like, "Who is this guy? He's awesome!" And he and I also struck up this great friendship, and then he uh, we started writing music together, and that was it. We just started a band together and played for for many years, and it was it was awesome. Really? Was this Brandy Loves Alexander? It was Brandy Loves Alexander. Welcome. He's to my done his cancer. research. He has. Oh God. He has. Mm. Yeah, Did Walt and... not warn you guys adequately? Come on now. <laughs> no. Come on now. <laughs> no, we know. Okay. Okay. How long? How long did that go for? Oh gosh, that was. Mm almost a decade I want well no probably like six six years or so um we played all over LA like we would sell out you know the mint and troubadour and and it was it was so fun we had um a music video that had like some cool bokeh Uh effects that got a lot of views it It was really oh oh Oh, oh, there you go oh oh Uh oh that's Uh right (laughs) um so still my favorite song of hers we played it at our wedding rightfully so it's really good Thank you. Yeah, it's it, it's uh, it's also kind of something we're still sort of using and things that we're working on. But Good, as um, should. but yeah, I mean, honestly, Ryan and I like the music was it was so much fun. And he he he's kind of a musical genius. And I was kind of learning how to write. And he was he was a little bit of my mentor and helping cool. me sort of to branch into someone who now uh, feels pretty confident about writing her own things. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the musical she just wrote. Like the musical right. I just did. Right. Yes. Is it? Do you find it different being on stage performing like a play versus performing a concert? Yes. Yeah. I'm so much more nervous performing concert. Really? Because I'm because I'm me. So oh, if people don't if people don't like it or they're not digging it. It's because Catherine made a, right. like, it's me. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, is what am I doing? Or like, if I mess up, it's, it's, you know, but if I'm acting in a role, I can be like, oh, well, you know, I can chalk it up to, oh, it's just the character. Or, you know, right. I can really yeah. escape so much into the character's <laughs> world that I don't notice. But yeah, so I would be so nervous before a show. I got better, but oh my gosh, in the beginning I was, and I played keys and yeah. my hands would shake and I would just be like, Calm down, girl. Like, you know, but <laughs> you got yep. this. You got this. What would Catherine do? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not lying. Like, I I haven't done a lot of acting since college, uh, except for in the things we've done. But um, I anytime I am on the spot, I am much more nervous when I'm me than oh, when yeah. I have a character thing. It, it helps also that when you're doing a performative thing, it's uh, an acting thing. It's it's got a script and it's a thing in theory you've rehearsed so you have a framework of what's supposed to happen sure. even if you drop that thing and light the things on fire you you knew you were not supposed to do that but in real life like that just happened and like oh my god now stuff's on fire but it's my fault you know i don't know yeah yeah i understand that there's way more and it's almost like the audience you can get away with a little bit like they don't know the script like I didn't mess up that line, it's fine. But then you're like, ooh, they just saw me miss a word, and they might know That's the words. Right. Ooh, mm-hmm. my god! And you yeah, kept exactly. doing it, and you did it for six plus years. My god, yeah, it's a long time, especially for yeah. music. Fans are like notoriously short lived, by and large. But six years is a long run. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. How yeah, was the troubadour? Because that's oh. pretty. I mean, that's come on. That's so the reason the reason why we actually named our band Brandy Loves Alexander is because of a story that is from the Troubadour, which was that when oh. John Lennon 
was in his last weekend. He came to, when he was in LA, he went to show with the Troubadour, I think with Harry Nelson, and they just ordered Brandy Alexander's nonstop. And they got so drunk that they got, they were just awful and they got kicked out. And, uh, and so. Um, That's something my, to aspire to. Yeah. Yes. My Goals. bandmate and I are huge John Lennon fans. I have, I actually have a John Lennon tattoo on my back Amazing. of his self portrait. Um, and so when we were thinking of names, we were like, well, let's just honor John Lennon with his very admirable brandy alexander story yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah the troubadour is so cool being in that the green room and just knowing all the bands yeah. that have been in there it was so trippy and amazing i just uh yeah that was that was a really fun show i've only played there once but it was like i'm sorry i missed that show uh, yeah ryan where were you so no what's that about I, I definitely remember going to the mint and seeing at least uh, a same. couple others but i but i missed the troubadour <laughs> what's the point mm. of even trying I know, Brian, thank you for reminding me I was mad at him about You're that. You're welcome. Now we're going to talk about this later. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's me and you now, Catherine. <laughs> well, we have these time gaps in our friendship, and clearly this was responsible for one yeah. of them. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens mm -hmm. to the best of us. <laughs> did, you, did you have anything like... Uh, hidden in your writer like so when you're in a band and then you you have a writer before and that you tell the contract it's usually like your audio setup but every now and then they'll be like only brown m&ms or like we want gushers oh my gosh that's so funny we we have made this joke many a time in this movie we're working on when we're talking to people i um i can't have m&ms because i can't have dairy so i'm actually super low maintenance um so no no i, I don't think it's low maintenance to not be able to have dairy that makes you higher maintenance then the people can't bring you m&ms they have to make sure they bring oh skittles. man oh that's so true i love skittles that's true though i you know what no i take it back i am high maintenance i'm stupid i'm sorry ryan mm. all right i'm not mad at you anymore you we can move on <laughs> she doesn't try to be high maintenance she tries to be low maintenance but then so many things will kill her it's, it's true yeah. high maintenance or high standards Ooh, yeah. Listen, Ryan's amazing. Is, that, is that wisdom wow. coming from a married man? Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, loving oh, it. Goodness. So, Ryan. Yes. I want to talk about real. Okay. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. First and foremost. Yes. How are you so good at drawing? I did not do those drawings. Okay, I knew you couldn't have it all. I had to find no. your weakness. There it is. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I have. Uh, I had a friend uh, that I knew in college, Dan Baker. He's an amazing artist, um, and he did all of the drawings for me. Actually, there was a couple other things that were comic book panels that uh, my friend and cameraman, who was a cameraman for us, Mike Robinson, he's also an artist Love besides it. being an author. So I had two people. I, I outsourced the art yeah. to two really <laughs> talented individuals. Smart man. Smart man. Yes. Okay. I, yes. So then in that case, how difficult was it to match like a fight scene frame to the comic panel? Because I guess there's storyboards in a way because you kind of cut in between. The advantage was the the gist of that story was it has two different realities going on and you think that one is the fantasy and the other is the reality and spoilers twist, it ends up being the reverse. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so you we shot all of the fantasy what seemed like the fantasy world with hunting vampires and whatever first because my hair was long was for that ask. role okay and all the fight scenes and then i went and cut my hair and while i was doing that like we had to draw panels of the the inserts of what the comic book was to match what we'd already shot oh that's smart i didn't oh. know that and, I, and, I, and since i owned the camera as far as i recall we shot those inserts months later because like I, I edited the scene, I figured out what our fight scenes or whatever our cuts in and out of the scenes were. And then Mike would draw the comic book panels and and go. So, yeah. Smart man. OK. So okay. The, the real short answer to your question is we cheated. Yeah. <laughs> All the great people do. Honestly, <laughs> that's smarter yeah. because it would have been much harder to be like, all right, let's set the camera up to the panel. That's not exact. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Fix it in post. Like, dude, stop saying well, that. It, it, it also helps that, you know, uh, and people do this all the time with the really professional stuff too, that like the sensor on the camera is a square, but we were shooting on a you know a rectangle like with black bars. So we had extra space. So I could film the panel ah. and I had the shot too, and I could slide it up and down in post to reframe it because you would only see the rectangle of it. So Yes, we cheated and then we cheated again. Good. That's yeah. how it gets done. 
I was wondering because because you do have there's a longer haired version of you with a cool sword, and then there's mm -hmm. the also as cool artist version of you. And I was like, well, 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 chicken or the egg? Which one was first? Long hair makes more sense because it would take you longer to grow it than to cut it. Wow, look what I'm learning. There's a couple time. scenes where I had to talk to myself, and yes. so we had to leave tripods and other stuff set up so that we could go back and get uh oh, and get yeah. the other half like there's only one split screen in the whole thing that i did but i it worked out pretty well but we had to like tape off or like uh like lock off and leave the tripod there and get that pretty late so that i could come back in a short amount of time and gotcha. get the other half of the scene okay mm -hmm. did you did you have someone else reading the other parts when you're talking to yourself yeah, I think it was my brother um, who was also in the movie with me, but he he sat in as me on either side. He was he was my clone double. Boom. Sorry, we've been watching a lot of Orphan Black, so I have that <laughs> fresh in my head. Rightfully so. Now, whose idea was this? Because for a feature to play yourself in multiple roles and multiple timelines, I feel like you just cranked it to the highest difficulty out the gate. I, I had a story I wanted to tell that was a bunch uh -huh. of disparate ideas that we kind of strung out and made sense, but uh, I just, it was always me being this person. I, I think I thought that I couldn't, I had no money. Sure. Um, I got family and friends to donate some money to help us do it. But like, I, I didn't think I could con like pay anybody. So I didn't think I could convince another actor to actually do all of yeah. this for nine <laughs> weeks plus. Uh, so that's, re I only really used myself because I was free. Yeah, dude, that's that sounds familiar. Relatable. That's what she got it. I'll do it myself. That's what you have to do. She only uses me because I'm free. I understand. No. I'm about to do the same thing. Don't worry. I'm <laughs> that's up. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, what was it like working in General Hospital? Oh, <laughs> I got to know. It's an established show. Were you nervous? Uh, I was at first, but I worked on it for a lot of years. I actually loved it. The people were super nice. Yeah. Um, cool. it was, it was a great set. And the thing that's so cool about, about soaps is that you're in and you're out. I mean, you get, they do an episode a day. So oh, it was God. just, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't envy people who had to memorize, uh, lots of things, but, uh, yeah. what's your so, character's name? I can't remember. You know, I didn't have a, a name. I was just the nurse. The I nurse. was a nurse. And then I was yes. in, in, in the general hospital night shift. I was the nurse in the nursery. So I, I was like a, a, I had a part, but I, and I had lines, but I didn't have, they didn't give me a name. But when I auditioned for general hospital, I'll never mm -hmm. forget the name of the person I auditioned what I, what her name was. Uh, uh -huh. the name was nurse Cantillion. Mm. Wow, what a and name. that name has yeah that has stuck with me. That was the per that was the character I auditioned Pillion. with. Yeah, you got to use that. Have, you have to work that into one. Come of your... on, I have that not. Is, that I is like not. a medieval princess Cantillion. I mean, yeah. like, she has a sword. Oh Cantillion. yeah, definitely. You've written two There's a fantasy screenplays at least, and that's not in there. Can't, no, not we yet. Have a, I guess. We haven't well, reached Cantillion level. You got to get to your oh, magnum man. opus and then throw her in. Minute. I mean, it, that was General Hospital when I was writing fantasy. I just wasn't, you know, channeling my soap days, you know. Well, it's okay. You've written, it's it's a two-parter so far. When you write the third one, when it's It'll a full Cantillion. trilogy, yeah. Cantillion's going to be in there. Perfect. That's now right. I know. Yep. Boom. Now I know. Whole new series, Cantillion Chronicles. We'll figure it out. Ooh. <laughs> All right. No, I got ideas. I got ideas. That's the real reason I want to talk to you. I just want to throw ideas at you. Just Cantillion, <laughs> give Seems her a sword, good. right? These yeah, it's gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> I so you talk about writing a lot of your own stuff. Where did the idea for Embridge come from? Oh man, um, the idea for Embridge came about because I grew up loving Jane Austen and Oscar oh, yeah. Wilde, and I just yeah, I just love period pieces and all things British. Um, and so I, you know, I actually think I was watching. It was a long time ago, but it was an ideal husband with Minnie Driver. It's an amazing mm -hmm. adaptation of that story. Really good movie. And um, and I remember just thinking, like, I this is such a wonderful story, but I really want one with a woman in the lead. I just yeah. and, and Jane Austen, of course, that's there, but it was with Oscar Wilde, the the wit is not exactly in Jane Austen. So sure. I really wanted something that was really witty. 
but also had a woman as the lead, which is actually a big reason why I got into writing in the first place, because as an actor, I was kind of tired of the roles I was being offered. Because, sure. yeah, there weren't really meaty ones for women. It was kind of always supporting a male's mm-hmm. character arc or, you know, it just didn't feel exciting to me. And so so the main thing was I thought I'm going to write a funny comedy of manners and have uh, a, a woman be the star. Yeah. And, uh, and well, also just to interject as a fan of Embridge and of seeing it, um, the other thing that I felt was progressive about it or that made it feel different than a lot of the other stuff in that space is it also has a, an American in it. And I know Downton Abbey's also done that, but whatever. But like, I thought that that- <laughs> This was before Downton Abbey. Yes. That Downton was. By the way. <laughs> I thought it was really refreshing to have a person come in and play with the expectations of what they think an American is in this yeah. like upper crust of tight British setting. It was really fun. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, that I thought was interesting is the play takes place in the 1860s. And I really wanted to bring an American in because, you know, I'm American, so might mm-hmm. as well have a little Classic. bit of that in there. Why yeah, not? I know. But then I thought, well, what's happening in America at that time? Oof. And it was, you know, yeah, really yeah. heavy shit going on. Yeah. And so I I, so I so thought in a comedy, it's a comedy, perfect. Let's bring in a guy who just fought in the Civil War. Um, <laughs> but but really what I, what I wanted to do, it was kind of my way also of juxtaposing this like society that's, you know, their worst problem is like, is my tea too, too cold? Right. And then you have this American <laughs> that's seeing this drama unfold and going like, oh my gosh, like I just, you know. And so it was interesting to sort of play with that a little bit as much as I could. Um, I, you know, I, I really, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. It was, it was my, that was my favorite detail about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so good. How long did yeah. it take you to write it? Oh my gosh, I started working on it in high school. Wow. Uh, I had a version of it in high school that his brother actually acted in. Oh, look at this. When I did it, it was a very, I mean, it was it was very different. Um, but <laughs> if, uh, I think I think really it took probably 10 years or so before I thought Ooh. this is good enough that I wanna, that I w- I'm ready to do something with this. So so it's basically this uh, about a, a woman who has decided that she's never going to get married. Um, and then so her her younger sister then is forced into this uh, kind of arranged marriage with their really old, awful cousin. And yeah. uh, and the and the whole fam, her and this younger sister and their brother decide they're going to come together and save her from this disastrous arranged marriage. And then, of course, this American comes into the play. And of course, then this woman who said, I will never marry has sparks with him. And it's like, <laughs> what's going to happen? So, you know, um, but I try I was trying to get that produced for for quite a while um and so but i'm glad it worked out perfectly because uh, the theater that i'm a part of finally yeah. allowed it to exist in the in the world and i thought it was a really fantastic production so this was little fish yeah little fish theater that's right and you got to play the role i mean i did how fun is that to have your ideas like just from a writing standpoint to see what you've been working on for so long happen and from inside out, because you're up there. Like, what what was that yeah. like? Oh, it's it's incredible. Yeah. It's so yeah, it's it's really amazing. Yeah, because it becomes, you know, my characters are friends in my world, in my imagination. Yeah, and totally. um, and I to see them actually get to live and breathe yeah. is exactly why I write them. And so it's this freeing thing where I think, okay. Like they've gotten to experience actually being alive and having other people witness them. And so it just, it's really lovely. And I've been fortunate because the productions that I've done, I've been really proud of the all of the actors and the directing and sets and everything has always just come together really, really well. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. I mean, how did you get to be the lead in that? Cause like, you know, I cast me as the lead for practical <laughs> reasons, you were actually doing a thing with people. There's money involved. Uh, you know, like how did that? Was that a, a fight, or were like, no, you, you should do this? Well, Blackmail. this was my M M&M and M moment. I was like, <laughs> you can't do my play unless I no. Mm. I, I will um, fight everyone else for this. I will <laughs> fight you. Uh, well, actually, I had done a staged reading of it at the theater, which was kind of there, dipping their toes and going, would people want to see this? We so we did a staged reading, and I Ooh. directed it. So I did cast myself in that. Good for you. Um, so because, nepotism. That's so. It. Oh, isn't it the answer for everything? <laughs> You um, left out the last five pages and be like, if I get this role, I'll put the last in. Yeah, exactly. So when it yeah, when it came about that they were ready to do it, um, yeah, they they essentially um sort of 
had me in mind and I definitely jumped at that chance. I was like, yep, thank you. I'll take that. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's, yeah, it was a, it was a dream role. That's so cool. How'd you know it was done to work on something for that long to not be constantly like, Oh, this could be bad. This could be, Oh, I don't know about that. Like, how do you let it go and be like, it's done. It's so interesting. I mean, in a way I, it really didn't, actually feel done until that first night because up until that first night of the first show there were Mm -hmm. still little edits we were doing here and there even after the reading even after the reading yeah because the the woman who directed it is brilliant her name's margaret and she uh, you know we would just discover things or i would there was one thing where my husband daniel was in it as well and he Uh played a a smaller part but he was really funny and he improv this thing that was hilarious and i was like well i'm adding that so i you know so (laughs) um and then there were just also i even changed i think a few parts even after it um to after it was done that i just felt I was like, okay, this needs one little extra thing here and there. So I don't know that it's ever necessarily done, but the way that I knew was, I I don't know how to describe it, but there's just this sort of inner feeling of like calm at the idea of other people reading it and even not liking it. Like, I feel like once you get to a place where you, you just think, well, what other people think now, let's, let's see, you know, I think that's when, you know, it's, it's done. And then before that it's going, Oh, I want people to read it, but wait, this doesn't, there's something missing from this part. Or, you know, I think it's when you lose the feeling self-conscious about it and then it's just time to let it go and see what happens. See, I have such a different vantage point on that because I'm also never doing anything live. And so it's always the thing that I'm editing or someone else is editing on a computer and I'm watching it over and over. And so it's done when we're sick of it and it's good <laughs> enough. Like, yeah. like that'll do just. Go. Yeah. Like, well, that's yeah. when you know it's done is when like, you can't watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah. You really do your own version of storytelling with the way that you edit. You're in a, he's an amazing that's editor. True. Yes. Um, he edited Elite everything editor, we've done. <laughs> uh, phew, well, that's a, that's an interesting topic. <laughs> you know. Um, but really, I'm always so surprised when you work on projects. Inclu- I, I did a short film that he wasn't a part of because I was like, mm-hmm. Ryan, I can't work with you yeah, on everything. That's enough. But then I, I came <laughs> back to him and said, please edit my movie. You're the best editor ever. Um, it was a really fun thing to edit, too, actually. It was like had a lot of dream logic to it. So we got to play. Yeah. Sure. But it, I, I'm always so impressed with how you're able to uh, take things that, that are still they're good, but you make it so much better and interesting in the way. And all you do, you're just editing it together. I just think it's so cool. I um I have certain things that uh I can't like I have to even if it takes extra time that in the edit I like to do like you've seen this a million times in movies and TV shows where there's close-ups of people talking and then the person who's in the foreground you're just seeing the side of their jaw their mm-hmm. line is over but their jaw is still that moving drives me nuts. and it drives me insane so in her uh, film she was talking about there was a moment that I needed to change the timing of stuff to work but like I couldn't let it stand that way so I split screened it and slid the guy's performance till he wasn't and it was handheld so then I had to track it so that it lined up but like I could not let that moment which which had all this tension in it like that you'd be distracted by this thing that I always notice and so I think that at least two other people notice it and so (laughs) my god did you did you teach yourself to edit or like you went to school for it like took classes so the first thing I ever, I, I don't know if I edited, I guess I had people help, but I, so in, in junior year of high school, they had there an amateur film contest. And so I wrote, uh, yeah, I don't know if you ever saw this. Um, I wrote and directed a shot on video, super cheesy and terrible, but like a, a James Bond short yes. where the gimmick, the shtick was the nerdiest kid in school was the james bond character so he was trying yes. to be cool and slick but he's he is completely ill-equipped for this thing and of course all he's given by we, we went into the science lab and had a friend wear a lab coat and be his <laughs> cue and you know this, the high-tech weapons he was given were a two by four and metallic bonding strips i.e duct tape and <laughs> that's what he had to use to go you know duct it was tape like james bond guys. needs macgyver yes I love okay. it. like you know but like the bad guy's chasing after him and he throws the two by four down and the guy trips over it you know it was it was completely <laughs> ridiculous um but at some uh friends of our family who lived like across the street were professional video editors so they like helped Dude. me edit my little movie over a weekend 
And so I learned how to edit in media 100. That's how long Look ago this you. was. And <laughs> so uh, I like from there had started to had learned how to do the digital editing thing. And then we go, I go to college and they're wanting us to edit in the first uh, class I'm taking in the film school thing. And they give me the equivalent of two VCRs to edit on <laughs> like reel to reel, but not even film, like, like just, and I was like, I can't do this. I did one <laughs> thing like that. And I just went to the TA and the complained to high heaven. I was like, where is an editing? There has to be editing labs on here with computers. And she relented and gave me the key to the editing lab. And so, and then eventually I just, got myself a copy of Premiere and later Final Cut. And so I just, I mostly taught, was taught by these people a little bit, mostly picked it up myself. That's Dude, awesome. do you ever think like, what are the odds that like you would be living next to people who edit videos? Like just the sheer statistics of that? Well, Brian, we're in LA. Oh, yes, you of know, course. So. I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your editors yourselves beforehand. Yes, you know, they're just, they I'll come out the room out with the premiere key. I get it. <laughs> oh, is that the LA thing? Uh huh. Nice. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they grow on trees out yes. here. And editors <laughs> like, Have you heard of resources? Other places, it's fruit in LA. It's assets. <laughs> I mean, they say that everyone has a screenplay in their trunk, but they also have an editor living down the street. You know, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> A script in your pocket, taken literally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, so I mostly taught myself a lot of things. Uh, I, I honestly feel that also working in post on that movie reel for several years was my film school. Several and, years? And it, it, well, because it went through revisions and like I had to do the special effects myself, what yeah. little there were, et cetera. And so it just, it was a thing that I, did and like I was taking a day job being a, a tester in video games to uh -huh. support myself while editing and finishing this movie and so like I but I just I learned a lot became self-taught from that like I didn't really I think learn anything professionally like uh essential that I had never realized about editing until I ended up not at the first video game company I was at but the second game company Naughty Dog which was a whole random wackadoodle circumstances that I even got there. But like, that's when I was under the tutelage of a professional editor who'd been doing this much longer than I had and learned things about editing dialogue and, 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 and stuff that I never knew. And like, I would watch him do something on the keyboard and there was keystrokes that he knew that like shortcut and did all this stuff. And I was like, how did you do that? What's going <laughs> on? And so like, that was my first uh, time learning, which was uh, easily a decade after I'd ever cut anything. Dude, how'd you get yeah. into game testing? Because it's it's not the same thing. No, no. Um, so while in college, I was always interested in also making video games. Like our friend Mike, who's been our cameraman and my artist on the movie, like he and I also had been working on game design documents for years. We were trying to start a company to like make video games. And part of that passion, like I, I found that there was this internship for Pandemic Studios. Uh, pandemic in my household used to mean something very different, and we would talk about it all <laughs> the time. Um, when I talk about my pre-pandemic days, I'm talking about being in college before I got that job, <laughs> not what everyone else is talking about. Pre-pandemic you know, studios. That, that would have been it. Would be kind of awkward if they still like, were around now. Yes. That, 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 that would, would be kind tanked. of a hard one to. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I haven't drank yeah. a Corona in three years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's also fair because though it's fine, there's better beer. I know, Corona's terrible. I'll say it. <laughs> don't sponsor this show. I don't care. <laughs> I think I just lost. We're never going to get Corona now. Yeah, I've, I've, I know. I'm sorry, I guys. Thanks for that. I'm that's sorry. what I mean. You just I'm sorry. Rush. You should have known you'd lose at least one friend on this. Uh, All right, Dos Equis, bring it on. But, yeah. So, like, I, I applied for this internship. Um, at, yeah, over a summer at Pandemic Studios and I didn't even get the gig because I can't remember why but the guy who was part of that hiring process I like just struck up a friendship with him and so yeah. and and continued to be friends with him he even had a tiny bit part as one of the people the vampires murder in my movie Love and it. then when I'm at, then I, you know, leave UC San Diego and I move home and I'm living with my parents and like, I'm trying to work, Smart. edit this thing. And I don't therefore have the money to go and uh, have an apartment of my own. This friend, uh, Kent Schulke, he said to me, like, you know, we're hiring testers uh, for this, this Star Wars game that we're working on. And I think you should apply for it. 
and I'm like, I don't, well, I, I want to work on the video games. Like I want to make them. And he's like, this is the way in mm. the way in oh. where you learn a lot. And like, yeah, you can still edit your movie, but then you'll have this, this side job. It's, it's something, you know, you can, you can, anyone can do this job. Like, yeah. and yes, that's true. Not really like video game <laughs> testing. I could not do that. A video game testing is not just playing video games all day and super fun. It's like, you're tr- like, you, you try and br- to break them. And then once you break them, you try and break it again in the same way so that you can tell the people how and why. And it's become even nowadays, the Ooh. people that we work with in QA, it's a really sophisticated art. It's, it is a more entry level job that anyone can learn, but not anyone can do it. Just sure. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, so just want to make sure that everyone <laughs> knows it's a, it is a, it's a hard gig and it's a harder gig now than when I started, but yeah, right. I was doing this, this side job, as a, uh, you know, uh, as a game tester, and then they liked me enough that they brought me back for Star Wars Battlefront Two, yeah. and they're in the middle of making it, and uh, they're like, "Oh, we actually need these like cutscenes in here. You know, can someone film in the game engine and d- d- knows how to edit?" And I was like, "I, I do." So, so Dude. they gave me, so they gave me a mini DV recording deck where you have to like oh, press record. That? Like like pre capture card. I was basically capturing to a fancy video tape. That's oh. how the technology was still back then. And so Amazing. I was recording, filming in the video game. Um, and then as that project wrapped up, that's where uh, I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I we have. also recorded a whole bunch of footage to make a machinima, uh, a Star Wars uh, like web series called A Clone Apart. A clone apart. The uh, the the brother of mine that you hear so much about is voice voices the lead character in that, um, and I'm very proud of everything we did, but I'm especially proud of his work. Rightfully it. so. Rightfully so. Did, so what is a machinima? Just because everyone knows machinima as like you know the the company machinima, but machinima is actually like a, mm. a term for a thing. It's anything that's captured in a video game engine, but rather than just a Twitch stream of watching someone play, it's it's editing that together to tell a story that is not the story that the game was meant to tell. Right. And so I, I first became introduced to the form and we were absolutely ripping it off a little bit when we made a clone apart uh, of the very famous uh, within that circle, uh, mm. Machinima Red versus Blue, yep. which was done by Rooster Teeth. And I have no idea if it's still running because I just I've, I've lost track of it. But it was sure. this amazing thing where they went into Halo and had a bunch mm-hmm. of people just standing around and talking. Everything you like about just focusing on people talking, yeah. that's this. That's what it's it was. a bunch <laughs> of soldiers who don't know why they're here in this multiplayer map and having hilarious conversations. Yeah. Yeah. How much of that footage was just troopers nodding their heads? It was all. We we had no <laughs> idea what any lines of dialogue were. We oh, really? We just got footage you of them nodding them? and turning and looking. <laughs> we, we, we knew what the scenario was oh i'm going to come right. in here and then i'm going to pause and i'm going to see a, a monster and i'm going to back up really slowly and then run away and then i've edited in post i've timed the head bobs to the lines we wrote later so we we filmed everything we filmed two seasons worth of material yep. we then wrote two seasons worth of it we wrote one season's worth of dialogue and recorded that and we basically i'm sitting on this other footage because I have no time anymore. Right. Um, but, Sorry. But, You're but, a I, busy. but I know what this, pl- but we know what this plot is. It's also hard because it's Star Wars. So we can never make any money from it. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I want to make it for money for profit, but uh, it's, it's that then that means I have to spend my time now that I'm like actually have a, a mortgage and stuff. Right. So like I can nice easily money. do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it, it costs my time and my sleep. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's just it's it's so hard but i do want to finish it because now a whole like the plot of it was so simple um it was take a clone trooper from the prequel trilogy and time travel him into the original trilogy era and he could comment like we all had been watching the prequel trilogy about how nothing made any sense <laughs> uh, and that that gimmick did not get old and then <laughs> and we like we got it so far as to time travel him forward even further into the Empire Strikes Back. And he was he was gonna keep going, but now we have a sequel trilogy that we can also make fun of. Right. But like <laughs> but we can't soil. It's oh my god, there's so much. There's so much we could do. Uh, but we don't 
we can't do this under parody law because right. it's too long. And like, I mean, I have the whole Star Wars Battlefront sound bank of Star Wars sounds that are right. copyright. Like I have John Williams music there that I can use and have like it all right. sounds and exactly right. And as long as no one makes any money off of it ever, uh-huh. it, it can be what it is, I think. But like yeah. it just. Yeah. OK. Where did you come up with the name for uh, dancing? Oh, that's a great story, Ryan. Where did you come up with the name Danson? <clears throat> I oh. don't know. Oh, I do. <gasps> oh, I do. Oh, see, I'm so glad you're here, Catherine. Look I'd like this. to specially dedicate this ex- uh, this explanation to your brother, Jeff. <clears throat> oh, okay. Because, oh, whoa, mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Danson is a character I wrote in a book. Uh, I have a fantasy, a fantasy novel that I, that I've written and, um, Jeff just really loved this name and uh, and used it. <laughs> well, wow. he he helped conceive of everything in this, so it makes sense that he would then suggest, well, the clones and the numbers he should be dancing Delta Forty. So that must, but it's because of you that dancing was in his. It was. Brain. Cool. It was, and it's, no, it's t- I I jest. It's fine. I but have it, but no I, idea. I, I just ripped you up. He definitely steal from the best. That's what well, you I know heard. what. <laughs> You you are owed uh, th- at least thirty percent of all the money we made off of a. Okay, hold on one second. Thirty percent of uh-huh. zero. Mm-hmm. Is- yeah, yeah. Does that also you know what, count as yeah, yeah. like? Does thirty percent of debt also work? I don't know anything about math. <laughs> Well, at least now I know if there's ever a lawsuit, that I know that we can include one more person's <laughs> assets, you know, in, in the collective you know pool. Oh, man, I walked right into that one. I think your dance was spelled <laughs> differently than his. Yours was Denson, right? Denson. Denson. No, hers was dancing like the verb. Oh, yep, yep. even better. Mm-hmm. Had a song in his heart, you know? He was dancing. There you go. He did. Last I name was, was Queen. <laughs> that's the one episode i'm so sad that we haven't gotten to produce yet because there's a bit in our trailer for it where he's singing uh-huh. and it's we had a musical episode that yeah. had gungans dancing around in the whole bit oh yeah and it's it's in season two and we've never we've never it hasn't you know there's only bits in the trailer so far Very someday bad. i have a question for you ryan i don't know if you can answer this what's the deal with the wampa it's back there it's hanging out it's in more than one scene. Am I looking too into this? Oh no, he's a character. Okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. I just want to yeah. get it confirmed. Just he's a character. Case, you know? Okay, all right. I, I recall mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. Uh, he's force sensitive in some way, and I believe there was going to be the gimmick where he would speak the way Chewie does, like, but not. Um, we haven't written it yet, but where uh-huh. like. He just makes growling noises, but everyone else couldn't understand him. Like we were gonna, <laughs> yeah, we were gonna do some fun stuff with him. I love it. Okay, okay. Had to get, had to get a little tease, you know. Keep a little, keep a little flame, flame there. It, it, there's a flame alive for it in my heart, <laughs> but it's good, yeah. good. Don't ever let it go out, right? Yes. No, no. <laughs> speaking of dancing, speaking of a song in your heart, Catherine, how different is it writing a play versus a musical? Because it's the same, but they're also very much not. Yeah, that's such a good question. They're, I mean, they're definitely different, but I feel like for me, uh, it didn't feel too different because I wrote a lot of that music separately. Like I knew the story that I wanted to tell, but oh. I kind of wrote the music before I started the the script part. Really? So um yeah. So, I mean, not all of it. Some of it did come in uh, as I wrote and I went, oh, we need a song here and things like that. But sure. um, so it kind of I was writing a lot of the music and then I was OK, now it's time to write the play. Um, and so for me, that one wasn't wasn't too wasn't too different. Did you ever feel hamstrung by the song where like this, this song kicks ass? I can't change it. But now this has to happen in the plot because like that but but you wanted to do something different in the plot luckily no not yes. with not with there that one anyway yeah um i i i have so i had so much fun writing musicals i yeah. i could do it all day yeah i could i loved it it was great so Good. i don't know 
I'm not very good at, I, I'm not, I'm like an okay piano player. So it's kind of funny. I'm glad no one sees me writing music because I'll <laughs> sort of try to figure out, I'll go like, oh, this, this is a great tune. Okay. Now what chords are these? I mean, <laughs> I, my poor Ryan, the guy in my band actually helped me produce the tracks that we played with this musical of mine that just uh, uh, premiered last in December of the last year. Um, yeah. And I felt so bad because my chord charts <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, sometimes they were question marks because I was like, I don't know what is this? Like, it's a variation of D, but what's this note doing in here? But I know this note is here. And poor Ryan would be like, oh, that's this, you know? And, uh, and sure. I was just like, yeah, Jason. Yeah, it's just yeah. like handwritten in a book. Like, uh, I just, oh, yeah, that that was poor Ryan. But, uh, but somehow he made it work because he's really good at what he does. But I have a good time with it. So. We can't all be Mozart writing the final version of it in one go. Yeah, that's my right? dream, but that that's so not me. Mm. Hey, no. there's a ton of musicians that can't even read music. David Grohl doesn't know how. Can you believe that? Wow. He has no idea how to read music. Wow. Yeah. Insane. So wow. you don't need to. All right. So I'm in good I'm You're in good, good company. company. You know, there Come you go. On. Actually, I know several uh, accomplished musicians, not Dave Grohl famous whatsoever, <laughs> uh, but who yet. also, yeah, they don't they don't know how to read. Yeah, yet. But they don't know how to read music. So it is a thing. Meanwhile, all legit musicians listening to this are cringing, going like, no. Listen, but you think musicians just... listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Brian, you, you I think aren't anyone you like a super classy dude? <laughs> I expect my dad will, okay? Come on. Okay. Is I he specifically a recall asking you that you <laughs> But he can't read music, so there, there. Uh -huh, we all both, okay, both. okay, okay. Improved it and done. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Right. Yeah, I don't know if Walt told you. Nobody listens to these guys. This was supposed <laughs> to be very clear in the beginning. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. I listen to him, so maybe, so it's just me. So you're the one. I know. Oh, I'm that one like <laughs> on your. <laughs> the one down I thought the that was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brian, she doesn't. I'm she sorry. Does, she oh. doesn't listen to them. She just likes them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it counts. A dollar is a dollar, Ryan. Okay? Oh, fair, fair. <laughs> That's really smart, though. Thinking about how, Ryan, you shoot with the long hair first and then cut your hair to shoot the short hair, you would write the music first because you don't want to write a play and they'd be like, mm, I should probably put a song here. <laughs> if you did yeah. the song first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then it's kind of a fun little puzzle. You're like, where did these fit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the one I'm working on right now uh, that won't be ready for a very long time, but that one is a much more like this. This one I just wrote or, or just did, I should say, was a two person musical in one set. I really wanted I mean, which is hilarious because kind of I have a theme, I guess, yeah, our, this I kind of, <laughs> where we also started with our project was like, I like it simple. And I really just wanted it to be just this this musical with these about these these two people for this night that they meet. Um, yeah. But this musical I'm working on now, this it's like a full on like this would be, you know, this is a Broadway type thing that I would cool. like. And this one's much harder to write. So this one is definitely uh, again, though, I'm working on the music first. So I know the songs that I, at least the songs I know that I want in there and when I want them, I'm doing those first so that I can then write the play and then plug them in. Um, oh. And so, yeah. Okay. I like yeah. that. I like that. I have a feeling that that's probably, I'm now speaking completely out of my depth here, but I could, <laughs> would think that that is the the it's way fun, a lot it? of stuff structured. But like even when they're making a, a musical out of Alana Morissette's albums, right? That the music exists and they're trying to figure out a way to right. tether yes. together a story. That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, maybe it wasn't always that way. Maybe Oklahoma, they came up with the story <laughs> first. I don't know. I don't know. Rogers and Hammerstein, they were pretty good at what they did. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. they were. I... I call They're it the across right. the universe yeah. method. You know, you mm, start mm. you start with the music. <laughs> yeah. Did all of it start out as without words? All of it started out as dream time. What? It did. Really? It did. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going back. Dream time. <laughs> okay. That threw me for a loop. Dream so time. I'll, I'll, I'll time travel you a little bit. So like I have just time travel. <laughs> shot, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I shot, you know, this movie and I had this camera and this crew of friends who Classic. did stuff. Uh -huh. And then someone graduated film school. Nice. Uh, and I was like, now what? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but um, but Ryan and I were, yeah, just people doing this 
similar type of creative things. Uh, and we decided that we wanted to maybe shoot a little short film together um, that would just be the two of us. Um, yeah. And I took it as an opportunity to write and direct and do something that wasn't in school. So for me, that was the really fun part was kind of being able to do those creative ventures that way. Totally. Um, yeah. And so... And we were both talking about it because uh, one of the things I learned in trying to make this movie is like that, you know, there's shorts for film festivals, but, you know, the the goal, the dream, right, is to go is to do the features, to hit the right. Sundance or the South by Southwest or whatever. But to do a feature, you need to do have 60 minutes. <sighs> 61 yeah. minutes is the minimum. And so 61. Uh, OK, yeah, that would yes. be a weird that's a weird feature too. But anyway, sorry, yeah, go but that's what imagine. you have to qualify. Yeah. Or, or at least that was, it you, was back, it was in back the then. Day. Uh, yeah. And so uh, like the suggestion I had to her was because I can only think in terms of long form storytelling, like you're able to write a short, our friend Mike is able to write short stories and like, they're yeah. really good at it. And I don't have that brain. I can only think of how you're telling a three act structure. Cause remember I grew up on freaking Robert McKee. Right. This and this. So I'm like, I don't know how, we can make whatever you write, but like in order for it to make, make sense to me for the long game to make sense. I was like, let's make one now. And then because we both loved these movies before sunrise and before sunset. And I can't remember which one of us thought we were both talking about it all the time, but I was like, so we'll make one short and then we'll make another one like X number of years later. And then we'll make a third one, like these three little 20 minute, 21 minute thing. And then we'll have 61 minutes. We'll stick them together and we have a feature and like Dude. that's that's how it could make it made sense to me like that yeah. each one would be like a part one two three so even if it wasn't Robert McKee it would at yeah. least kind of have a <laughs> it had somewhere it was going yeah it's a Ryan uh, James it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so so we Out knowing kind of that and then we had wow. Ryan's camera that he had just tr filmed this movie with mm -hmm. um, and these couple of friends who had just done this movie as you know, with him as well. So having, um, would you say zero budget? Is that fair? Uh, right, right, right around. No, 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 hmm. no. Oh. There was Rounding a... up, I would say it was maybe. No, because there was a taxi ride to LAX that we filmed we in did. and you paid for that. So whatever that cost, we're oh, to man. and from $300. LAX. Still, still, <laughs> still paying for it. No, uh, <laughs> No, I would think that the residuals from Kindergarten Cobb are evening it out at this point. That's maybe. how expensive oh, no, taxes they, are. They right. helped me pay for college. So uh, I know. Yeah. I know. The trade. Awful. Taxi, college, same same price. But yeah. I so, think it might be at this point. I don't know. But it was the budget of a taxi ride. It was and, the budget of a taxi ride. And she was really okay. smart. She said it mostly at night so that we didn't have to worry about continuity. Smart. We could just be as teenagers or post-20s-ishes are of like be up until four in the morning uh -huh. at the time it actually made sense yeah now i don't know how i we I mean, will do that but uh but yes we, we have some night shoots coming i up. know we do i know who I wrote this thing <laughs> um but uh but yeah so we filmed this this short film uh and it was uh a story about uh two step step siblings who met as teenagers when their parents got married and uh it was all in one night it was the stepbrother coming home in the middle of the night saying it was for one reason, um, but it was really for another. It was really for her because they had this kind of uh, romantic thing, but they're horrible mm -hmm. communicators, so they couldn't really ever sure. confess it to each other. Um, they talk a lot, but they can't communicate. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Relatable. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was great. And it ended up getting into some film festivals and and we just Hell thought, yeah. okay, this is really cool. So yeah, we will revisit this. And then five years later, we did the same two characters and that was without words. Got yeah. it. Yeah, and so they wow. come together after after things went awry in the end of the first one and they finally are like kind of forced to see each other again and plan this uh, anniversary party for their parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ew. And so part part two, we ended up having a bit more of a budget and we ended up uh, finally letting those two crazy kids get together in the end. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. All you needed was money. <laughs> that, okay. money does buy love that's it does. the point oh, I've that's always what said that movie's this. about <laughs> you know in every rom-com there needs to be an obstacle in, in between the people usually it's because one of them is about to get married but in this case it's just money, oh, it's money. Now, oh, the universal obstacle sense. let's be honest 
let's be real honest that is 100 this. you need to rescore the the, the <laughs> final part to uh pink floyd's uh you know the yeah, back yeah. Register. Um, yeah exactly <laughs> when it all comes together clearly then you everyone the for pink floyd? um i'll uh, talk to christina and get back to you okay. i'm guessing they're gonna yeah, say we'll, we'll no but you know <laughs> only well, one way to find post. out that's, oh, that's, a, exactly. that's a problem for future us <laughs> that's oh I love that saying. That's one of my favorite sayings. Yeah, say that's all future me's problem. Yeah, that's oh, a problem yeah. for future Brian. He'll figure it out. Oh, future yeah. Brian oh, I love that you believe Brian. in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. <laughs> I'm just a decent actor. <laughs> How many times a day do you go through and just like future Brian, fuck that guy? I'm one yeah. <laughs> With every moment of my being. <laughs> <laughs> or do things like, do things finally come up and you're like, damn it, past Brian? All the you time. Know? Oh, oh yeah, I, it's oh, yeah. the three of us do not get along. You know that me, myself, and I. Yeah. Toxic. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I got you. They're That's working right. to sabotage each other. I'm, no, obviously <laughs> not me, but no. You know. No. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. future Brian. <laughs> mm. That's nuts. That's blowing my mind. Out the gate, you're like this, and then this, and that. Nobody does that, Brian. The foresight it takes. What? Well, I mean. So remember, she was just supposed to write another 20 minute short for this time around. <laughs> for part three. For part three. And, mm-hmm. and instead she she didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll let her speak to that. But just to say, like, uh, she's really like she restructured all the stuff that we had done before and made it all pay off. So it looks like we knew what we were doing. It looks like our past Ooh. selves were fucking brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but really, it's, she wrote it. So it's because she is. Oh, Genius. Stop it's like it. no. putting, putting songs to plays, now putting past stuff to present stuff. You have a the present here, stuff. Catherine. Yeah. Oh, well. Hmm. Uh, no, I, you know, yeah, it, it's, when we got together thinking about this third one, I I knew that I wanted it. I wanted to open up the world a little bit. The first two mm-hmm. movies were very centered around Ryan and myself, mm-hmm. um, but I really felt like I wanted to uh, open up their world, bring these the, the the characters of the parents in who we talk about a lot, but we never see. Sure. And particularly Ryan's character, Gary, has a lot of uh, a very complicated relationship with his father. And so, you nice. know, it was too good to not have it in there. Um, and then also just to to bring other other relationships and other things to make this movie feel relatable on uh, a lot of different levels and go to deeper spaces. And in sure. order to do that, it occurred to me that <clears throat> something my past self didn't think of, which was this should be a feature. Um, yeah. and when I thought that it was like the light bulb moment going up over my head. And I just realized that instead of it being this linear, you know, part one, part two, part three, that what made we the had most... a plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I just thought, okay, instead let's interweave all the plots together in, in ways that I didn't think of and we never planned for sure. but it does it felt like it was on purpose as soon as I started doing it and as, as soon as I realized that actually some of the stuff that we shot at the time thinking it was about one thing I I realized now as I'm older looking back that actually I think it was about something else Ooh. and so yeah so it just became this this thing where we you know got to do these interweaving timelines and at least for one thing you can say for me with writing all of this is that we did at least film those already. So like a third of the movie's done. Yeah. You're welcome. Look at well, actually, that. you edited them together too. So and <laughs> okay, never mind. But 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 so we you're don't have to, <laughs> but we don't yeah, have to shoot like two hours. We have to shoot like 70 minutes or so. So like That's it's more it's than gonna 61. work out. It's it's also Bad. more than twenty. You so know? It's, why panic- it's, it's why I'm panicking a little, but it's it will be it will be worth it. I'm definitely panicking too. It's just like deep, deep inside. It, it really does. All, all of these things kind of pay off and line up, and it it the script spells some of them out where it's clearly like we're match cutting across time, uh-huh. of in these same locations because it still takes a bunch of it takes place in, um, the same house we shot pieces of in the first two, and so we have these that we have this set that is my parents' house, by the way, uh, but that we can just <laughs> echo, we can come back to, and and so we can really play with that, and we can be in a location having a thing going on in the present, and it's it's that natural segue to something that happened there before, yeah. and the issues that they have that are still, 
I mean, they got together in part two, but apparently that's the happy ending isn't start there. Like apparently you have to still work and <laughs> well, you can still yeah. have issues that are that's not what's solved. Called, that's called marriage. <laughs> yes. Uh. So uh, even though our characters are not technically married, they've been together for 10 years. So it's like pretty yeah. much the same. But the idea common law. that was common law. It's, it's but that was sure something that I, yeah, I wanted to, um, <laughs> you know, look at with that whole, everyone loves the Hollywood ending, right? Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because, you know, what happens afterwards and mm -hmm. especially because lots of things come up in life, not just about a relationship that tests the relationship, um, yeah. even things like about babies. work or family or, Ooh. or babies. Interesting. <laughs> you should mention that. <laughs> So that's why it you had a so baby. It was so convenient saying. that I had a child. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that was the part of the plan. Not, well, oh, the, okay. When I said we had a plan, <laughs> I didn't. Just, no, I I, 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 I did not um, get pregnant for Ryan. That's uh, not so wrong. I don't. It know. Was, how, how so however, it wasn't a contractual baby, is what you're saying? No. <laughs> however, I just want to be clear. I, <laughs> when I when I saw her baby with his beautiful blue eyes. I was like, he he kind of looks like he's our kid. Like we, if you yeah, are, if you will consent <laughs> to us using your child in this film, we can, that's production value. And it's funny because initially, like this was years ago, I had this idea for part three that it was going to be, the parents were going to be in it. And then, and then that Celeste was going to be pregnant, my, the role of my character, that mm -hmm. she was going to find out she was pregnant during it. And so when he mentioned that, I thought, We'll just push the timeline a little bit for her. Sure. Okay. Maybe she already found out. And uh, the level you know. of commitment. If anyone ever yeah. asks what you're willing to do for a role, you can say, I had a child. <laughs> I mean, I respect it. It helps, man. You know, listen, I don't, I don't know of a single Oscar winner who's gone to that level of commitment. Not one. You know, since no one, like Brian said, no one's going to listen to this. We can change the story <laughs> and you can say that this was part of the plan. Yes. You're going to have a kid. I think <laughs> I will. I would. I think I will. It's I would. impressive, right? Is everyone yeah. impressed? Except my kid who grows up and hears it and goes, Mom, what? Yeah. The, I only had you for a I film. I only yes. had you for a film. Yes. But you were you so cute in it. You're welcome. I know. Mm, mm. <laughs> Thanks, past us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Was so Ryan, you had your plan from the beginning. You got your three shorts that would turn into a feature. You made two shorts. Now the third one's going to be a feature. Where where are you thinking? Like, where's your head at with this? Because it's different. It's a bigger project out the gate because you're biting off a much bigger bite, and you're crowdfunding soon. Yeah. Yes, we are. So um, we're crowdfunding. Where are you at? Where's your head at? Oh well. We tried to figure out how we can do this and what's the least amount of money we can do it for. And so it's like for all of that expanded world that has these other actors, that's not us because we're free. Technically. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, remember that whole thing we cast ourselves because we're free. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we like, Still right true. <laughs> so I put my producer hat on and was like breaking it down and looking at it. And it's like, okay, I think re roughly it's like, there's about 10 days in here. That's just you and me. So pretend that we, you know, do it the old fashioned way and we have Mike come in and hold our camera again and the whole bit. It's <laughs> like, all right, so then we just need to afford these 10, really it's 13, but like these 10-ish days uh, with these ten other adjacent. actors. Yeah, 10 adjacent act uh, yeah, with like these it. other actors. And so it's like, what is just the bare minimum that we need to like make just that? And then what's, if we got a little, like there's also, there's a cap, like, because we were doing this SAG, because uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you just, you have to do a production of SAG for all the, all, all the reasons. Yeah. Um, and, but like SAG has this great thing called the micro budget, where if you're at 20,000 or less, like you can make your thing and you, there it's a lot easier just logistically to do that. Sure. Uh, but then if our crowdfunding, you know, goes over that, uh, and we use that to make this production as opposed to say like pay for the fees of the crowdfunding. You know, if it all evens out that way, then it's like, all right, then we're SAG ultra low budget, which is a, 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 a tier above and it's just is more financially complicated as far as yeah. the paperwork and stuff. And so the budget kind of leaps up a little bit. But we basically figured out these different tiers of what does it take to just film these 10 days? Um, and then, you know, what's our contingency plan? If we get a little 
more money is great. More money apparently is why these two got together, right? So if right. we have more money, well, <laughs> we have our, our our plan about what this will cost then. And then, well, what does it cost to film the whole thing where we are, we can pay our crew the whole time? What does it cost if we actually or get us. to pay ourselves, you know, and, and I don't even know what that would look like. So but. it's it's like yeah. watching a little pool of invisible theoretical money fill up, but we're at least seeing kind of what all those would be and and have plans. Yeah, we have grand plans if we if we yes. no matter yes. what. But um, we'll yeah. see. We're, we're hoping it's going to go all the way. Up. Yeah, and I think Ryan and I both have a have a history of. Uh, making movies that we didn't have high budget and somehow it was that creative, uh, I don't yeah. know, this creativity about, okay, well, how can we make this look like it is and how can we make it feel like it is? Yes. Um, and uh, usually, you know, so yeah, I think that that, it's been a fun challenge going, okay, well, yes, it's going to be a feature, but how can we do this in a way where we utilize all our past experience that we've been working on very indie projects, but making them look awesome uh and bring that to this um yeah. and you know and really we we have found a way now do i w want the grand dream version of course i do course. but it is kind of nice that we have this um i don't know this lower version where we know it's still gonna look and sound awesome because it's just of how we how we are i guess i mean we know what corners we're able to cut you know for the, like Sure. My mom is not going to charge us to use her house, and you know these other <laughs> locations we're doing. We're able to, we're able to, we're able to get a lot of favors, or like the fact that uh, our cinematographer, uh, who's a guy I've known since uh, technically the end of high school, but really we became friends in college. Like he knows how to exploit uh, the latest technology to make everything look really, really like Hollywood level, but with no lights, yeah, uh, or almost no lights, uh, and and. On top of it, he when he was making his own movie, he worked with this actress who's incredible. And I I asked through him, like, and she's agreed to play her mom. And then meanwhile, mm. I've talked to all of the voice actors, like all of them that I've worked with <laughs> in video games, saying, like, I need someone to play my dad. And no voice actor I've worked with is old enough to play my father's. Like, does anyone know anyone who could play my dad? And like one of the these great uh uh, actors that I worked with on Uncharted 4 he's like oh I know this guy and he could do it and so and he agreed too so like we have these really really solid incredible act established industry actors agreeing to play our yeah, parents yeah. and it's all through favor of friends putting themselves out there and asking and them being willing to read a script and like love fall in love with a script yeah uh, of what of what Catherine's written yeah. oh I love that so much. It gets me so hyped when people are making their own stuff. Like that's that's that thing. There's mm -hmm. there I I've run into I mean there's a spectrum obviously, but there's two big categories of actors that I've found and creators I'll say. There are the people that wait for things to happen and there are people that make things happen. And the latter are the ones that I really really connect with and want to build up cuz it's like you're doing the damn thing. Like ah, how do you not get excited about that? I love it. I love well, that's, it. That's awesome. That's like the biggest advice I, I I've heard other people give it. It's this is not coming from me, but it's it's, it's advice to everybody who's an actor or even a screenwriter. All these people who are like, I just want someone to make my screenplay, or I want someone to cast me in a thing. And the answer, especially as technology has gotten better and better, and you could shoot an entire thing on your iPhone, right? And yeah. you know now that is just like, well, then go make something yourself. Go make a yes. thing and prove. You are like, that's how Vin Diesel got noticed was he right. made a film that featured him. And yeah. he's not the only one, but like just Stallone. anyone. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, make make a thing and and get your name out there and get a thing in, in front of people. I guess even Sling Blade, right? That's how Billy Bob yeah. Thornton's career launched. And so just all of and I'm only citing men, but I know it's not just men who've done this. I feel really kind of shitty right now. Uh, but um, all of it. Yes. Wink, wink. Uh, but uh, yeah. So but, that's. I mean, when we started Dreamtime all those years ago, we had no idea what that we were going to end on this. You know, we knew we wanted to complete their story, but we had no idea it would be through a feature. But what we did know was, OK, we have this location that will be free. We have a mm -hmm. camera um, and we know we have two actors w wanting to be in this thing. So I knowing that I that's exactly what I did. I thought, well, I'm just going to make something that we can do ourselves. And, uh, you know, and from there, I think it was the 
thing probably that has taught me the most about all of filmmaking is just doing it ourselves. And the same for you, you were saying with editing, it's like, I mean, you just taught yourself. You definitely wrote within the limits of what we had. Like they go to a house in Joshua Tree and like, I have a friend who will probably loan us our house in Joshua Tree. I mean, I wrote that feature with, honestly, with locations in mind where I I did not write a location where I thought, how will we get this? I Every yeah. single place that we had, I was very purposeful about knowing that this is something that I kind of like that, though. Again, I look it's at these things as creativity, you know, yeah. where it's like, OK, so how can we play with this world within the parameters that I know we're going to have? Constraints and then, help. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent, because then you have a million possibilities, and you don't do anything. But if you have, that's why Vine was such a thing. You have seven seconds, <laughs> no. and people are like, "Ah!" Oh. It's like, "All right, this constraints are the way where you have to be creativity within the parameters." See, I mean, that's a short I really couldn't do. That seven seconds, that's too short. It's too that's short. like that's like overwhelming. Like, and oh. I mean, it means yeah. we can't do some things, like we can't have a big fight scene in the middle of the LA Convention Center. But we'll save that for the next one. Yeah, I mean, you already told me I had to cut that. Right. Damn it, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan needs at least three of those vines. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, funny enough, because even though the film reel that I made will never like see the light of day, uh, because of the nature of this, and we were both in this thing, I have this footage of us that's even older than Dreamtime, and there's a nice. moment in the script that I realized, oh, I can cut to a couple clips from that, and we can, like, yeah. fake that this was them that we even did further back mm-hmm. like when they yeah. first met and what? so yeah yeah so, that's the fun part it's so fun yeah that was awesome when you remembered that you had that and now we have this even more to put in there so it just keeps looking like we did it we really perfect. knew what we were doing all the time. look at that <laughs> i love it so how are you crowdfunding it where's where's the campaign gonna be i'm gonna put a link in the thing Okay, it's at Indiegogo, but we're going to just point everybody to it uh, with allofitmovie.com. Allofitmovie.com. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I love that it's called All of It as well, because you're using all of your past stuff. You're using all of it. I don't know if that was intentional, but I like it. I mean, partially, absolutely. And then I think also because, you know, it is, uh, I love writing in different genres all at the same time. Yeah, because that's life. I don't, you know, life is like so heavy and then something hilarious happens. And so, so I was really playing with, it's a romance, right? And there's a lot of comedy in it, but there's also a lot of serious subject matter in it too. Um, My character is going through postpartum stuff. um, And then uh, my mom also is going through like a terminal illness diagnosis. So there's really heavy things going on that I feel like, you know, are actually relatable to a lot of people, but it's happening all in the midst of other things like romance and family and comedy and because life is all of it. And so that's kind of, um, if we wanted this to be kind of a slice of life a little bit, then it just sort of encompasses all the things. And it it also, the first two films especially had this very kind of uh, Gilmore Girls uh, vibe to the dialogue. Sure. Gilmore Girls slash Very Aaron fast. Sorkin, if if you will, yeah, the fast paced. Yeah. Amy um, Sherman Palladino. Yes, and is and, my spirit animal. Um, I wish. <laughs> and what I what, but kind of what I was saying about how like it it's really coming together and all making sense. Like it, it mm-hmm. this story finally shows how much of that is like these characters' defense mechanisms mm-hmm. and how they when they're not communicating they talk around it by by using this more patois if you will like it is naturalistic but it's a little stylized when people talk like that but people do that all the time mind you people banter like crazy and so it's just but now it becomes clear like that it's banter and when it stops and they then they real talk whichever characters all the characters have moments like this uh you can you we can get that slightly more real natural thing um, and so that you you understand that this is a defense mechanism and mm-hmm. that uh, and, and, and so it's not just like the whole thing is stylized, I guess is what I'm sure. saying, you know, um, the way that sometimes is used. You can tell that this is this is reality, even if these characters talk a little bit faster and more clever than. Well, I don't know about you, but then I am at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about this. This sounds really cool. And now that I like. I've gotten to know you guys better and like hearing how much has gone into it and the passion, just like that. There's no way this isn't going to be great. I'm pumped. I'm pumped about it. Thank you. We're so, we're super excited too. He he bought it. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Does this mean we have to deliver now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You better, you better. <laughs> Not to add no, more pressure, we're... but oof, I'm invested. <laughs> we're so we're so excited, and honestly, like the the other thing that's so fun about this feature is the cast and crew that we have in our in our hands at this moment yes. because uh, we have some really talented people uh, attached to do this, and it's just like that's the thing that gets me really excited because yes. now that we've opened up this world, um, it's really just gonna fly. It's it's yeah. it's really awesome. We're not just stuck working with each other. Oh, we have other God. people to bounce off. Yeah. I know it's been so <laughs> finally. Long. I know. Sheesh. Oh, did I mention that's why I wrote a feature? Mm. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm also just really thrilled to like after two movies and really of 15 plus years of talking about my father i'm actually going to get to like <laughs> argue with him yeah for real like, it's yeah. some closure for yeah. once. it will be cathartic we've actually been building up quite a bit for you yes. and so you <laughs> finally get to have that uh -huh. it's yeah. time for him to go method you had the kid he needs to fight his that's dad. right I got yeah, it. it's your turn. Mm -hmm. well, and, and and just certain things in life just happen to work out to make it perfect. The the set, if you will, that is supposed to be my character's old room. Like once me and my brother moved out of my parents' house, my father turned it into a study with bookcases. So now we can go into this same room and I can feel that my dad has taken over my room. But it's <laughs> but it's a more like it's a more point of contention rather than what it was in reality. And so like just yeah. life handed us all of these yeah, gems. Yeah, we took it and ran. Oh, life yeah. handed you all of it. Boom. Mm. Look at that. I know, wow. we do that too now. We, we, we'll, <laughs> you know, we say all of it and we go, oh, oh yeah. It's nice. a phrase that everyone says all the time. I now can't unhear it. It doesn't matter what is it's on the radio. I know. I know. Yeah, I understand. Welcome, Brian. You now will also never be able to unhear it. My last name's Balance. Ooh. Yes. I feel you. Anytime someone's like, I need more balance, I'm like... <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I'm available. Yeah, yeah. Here I am. It's All a, right. it's a, it's a mental illness at this point. Anyone mentions <laughs> anything about balance, I'm like, yes, it's the worst. All, <laughs> see, at least all of it is more socially acceptable. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll give it to you. It's more versatile. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but just like that, guys, we've been talking for over an hour. Look at us. You survived. Uh, we did. Boom, 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 boom. This has been a easy. blast. Oh, my God, yeah. you guys are awesome. This was wonderful. Thank you. It was you. so awesome to chat with you. No, oh, stop it. I'll cut that out. Before I release you <laughs> back into the wild, uh, where, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Where can we find one more time where this is going to be? I am so bad at this that I can't remember all my <laughs> handles because they're slightly different. Sometimes it's RM James or Ryan M. James or the Ryan M. James. I have to put the M in there because there are 10 Ryan Jameses exactly. on IMDb. Oh, yeah. Sure. So, sure. Um, Wow, so like that was off. Can we cut that response too? No, that counts. That, was... that counts. It's, oh, it's a little. Boy. I feel a little douchey. I feel the... like I should have gone first because I'd be done by now. You know, I... dude, you're almost as bad as I am at this. Right? Well, then, then... <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, that it's your turn, Catherine. How's it done? Okay, <clears throat> <clears throat> here we go. You can find the information about our crowdfunding and also all the fun videos and things that we have on allofitmovie.com. Uh, and you can find us, you can also follow us on Instagram at allofitmovie. Uh, I am Catherine Farringal on Instagram. And I think that's pretty much it for me. You can also go to my website, katherinefarring.com. Boom. There is a RyanMJames.com, but it doesn't mention our movie yet. I probably should <laughs> fix that. Wrong, yeah. I was kind of editing videos. I didn't have time to update my no, website. No, yeah, it's a legit <laughs> excuse. He has been editing, like, he. I get emails from him and it's like 1.30 in the morning and I'm just going, oh gosh, dude, I'm so sorry. But I'm not sorry because they're awesome. Yeah, so. no, no, no. He, he chose this. <laughs> he did. You have no choice but to join That's me right. now, Ryan. Just like his mm. handles, Ryan M. James. <laughs> 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 I love it. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. 
You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.